Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Give this video a like. We also have this little thing called a podcast below in the description. Go check that out. Podcast brought to you by DraftKings. And this video is presented by DraftKings. Masters Week, guy. Masters Week. Promo code HAM for that. And American Giant. We got our American Giant hoodies on. Use promo code HAM there as well. Yep, American-Giant.com. You got a little link below in the bottom. Check it out. Albert Breer wrote this. I don't believe people know who the Niners are taking third. And I'll punctuate that by giving you this nugget. When Kyle Shanahan went to assistant coaches Mike McDaniel, Rich Scangarello, and Bobby Slowick, among others, for assessments on the quarterback class in January and February as he and John Lynch mold a big move up the draft board, he didn't share his own evaluations with those guys. Shocked? Awed? Stunned? Selfish Got Kyle it. with his takes? <laughs> the thing in an evaluation in a draft room is... Groupthink, and I think this happens, is, Twitter's a great example of this. Groupthink is very natural. You don't want to go against the grain. You don't want to look like an outlier, even if you're right. Because usually the mob, and it speaks, this is, draft room is no different than Twitter, will get you. If also, real, also against, this is one thing that Twitter and real life actually do have in common. But the difference, though, is you don't work for anyone on Twitter. So it's just the mob of, let's say, your peers, right? If you're a celebrity or you're in the media. In, in real life, in the NFL, there's a hierarchy. And if you go, think about this. If you're watching this, you have a boss. And you know he wants to do X. But you really want to do Y. You are more likely to capitulate with him and do X. Why? Because you just want to make him happy. You answer to him. It's why arguments with parents are often so easy because once you get to like 10, you view them as equals and you will naturally go back at them, right? It's just a very, even though they rarely take your side, you never hesitate voicing your opinion. Well, in a draft room, when you know the head coach or the general manager is smitten, or even if like, let's say at this time when he went to them, he wasn't in love with any of them, but he did have a preference, it would not behoove him to, to tell them, who he likes, right? Like you want in a draft room and in, in most normal place in society, you don't want everyone to think the same. You want people to have different opinions to then make the ultimate decision. Now that doesn't mean if the quarterback coach or McDaniels, they're Adam and another guy, it's ultimately going to impact the decision the other way. But like, that's the way you do it. Like that's, that's a normal, healthy Remember when they took Baker Mayfield? They did the same thing with back when Elliot Wolf was there. Remember they had a bunch of scouts with the Browns, and uh, I think it was Highsmith who used to work for the Browns too from Green Bay. He did. They, no one told anyone. They all got in the draft room and they just gave their opinions. When I was with the Eagles, it, it was hard as a younger scout. Like I always wanted to know, like Lewis, who do you like? Veach, who do you like? You know, like when I got in front of Howie or Andy to give your opinion on a player, if you knew like everyone was behind you, you felt better about it. It's just a natural reaction. No different as an assistant coach. I I think 100%, if you're not doing business like that in the NFL, you have a problem. I think it's completely normal. And honestly, it's it makes me feel they got a healthy environment there. Like, yeah, that's but a good here's thing. what I know. <laughs> like that worked in January and February. Now those guys know what the draft board looks like, right? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. They don't know who Kyle likes right now. I, well, I let think me make a lot of assistant, Maybe a lot of assistant coaches are not privy to the draft board okay. because I, you can't trust them talking. But here's the thing. So I don't know that. Thank you. But I do know that this Niners group, they don't leak. So I am confident that even if they knew who Kyle liked, we would not know who Kyle liked just because Bobby Slowick knows who Kyle likes or Rich yeah, if Scangrello. You told, if you told me looks, Mike McDaniels knows, I could believe that, like him and Kyle. But what right. I'm saying, John, is like even if any of the guys listed here know – if Mike McDaniel knows, that doesn't mean that Chris Sims knows, and that doesn't mean that now all the media knows. Like, I think the one of the reasons Breer writes this is because there was so much Mac Jones push. And I'm saying, even if these guys know who Kyle likes, that's not where this Mac Jones stuff comes from. This Mac Jones stuff comes from everyone else thinking they know what Kyle likes. Yeah, and I, people are very, very adamant. I mean, Chris Sims... To, I saw Mike Tannenbaum talking with I'm, I'm just talking about people that know agents and know, you know, even if they don't know Kyle, like they're very tied in with the agent community. And the one thing we know with the agent community is they talk the most. 
but I mean, there are some coaches that Kyle's dad was known to talk a lot. You know, the Saints have had people over the years to talk a lot. The Eagles, like there are obviously teams talk. John Schneider, Aaron Rodgers, but I, I think the agents they get their opinion and they want to like who would want this out there? Well, obviously Mac Jones's camp would want that Kyle's in love with him. Wouldn't that be good for Mac Jones's camp to know? Like, damn, Kyle Shanahan traded fucking pick 12, two other first rounders and a third round pick to come get Mac Jones. Like I would say that would, if I was in a draft room and the group think if I was pounding the table for Mac Jones, I'd get up and be like, well, Kyle Shanahan loves him. <laughs> Kyle Shanahan. I'll never forget the story I heard. We always laughed at with the Eagles was Ramsey's Barden broke Jerry Rice's records at Cal Poly for division one double a. And the dude pounding the table for him when people were like, you know, I don't think he's fast enough. And he got up and he said, you don't like a guy that broke Jerry, right? Like you use everything on your side. If you're arguing for Mac Jones and these other teams, you're a GM or a head coach in Atlanta, in Carolina. You're like, look at Kyle Shanahan. They, I'm hearing they love the guy. Wouldn't that be a good thing for your argument if you were pushing Mac Jones being an NFL legit starter? Yeah, it's a good thing for your argument. The problem with it is it falls apart on draft night if Kyle Shanahan doesn't draft him. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out you were tricked. Well, maybe he could. I think it's going to be fascinating if they don't take Mac Jones, which I don't expect them to. Their reaction that Thursday night, right? How are they laughing about it? Are they saying we've messing with you? Are, how how I don't do think they they'll say that? I don't think you can say that until you've retired. I, I'd say Kyle and John would be the closest to the most inclined to say to make a joke about it. I, yeah, there could be a joke, but I just I don't think you say we started it. You go, yeah, we saw all of that. No, 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 no. We we just we didn't poo poo it. Yeah, right? we didn't stop it. But we who does? Who would poo poo it before the draft? You're insane to. You no, know, it makes it actually. The if they're not taking Mac Jones, it would make sense. Like obviously, it was good for us. We didn't want it out that we loved so and so. Honestly, it won't even matter. The moment they don't take Mac Jones, it'll be completely obvious that either they were behind it or definitely helped it kind of flow down the mountain, right? Or yeah, or just let it happen. I I do think I can definitely see the Thursday night press conference with Kyle kind of smiling as he talks about why they drafted Justin Fields. Yeah. And talks about how, like, yeah, we just didn't know if the Jets were we we're kind of holding our breath. We we didn't know the Jets might take them. Uh, they took Zach and blah, 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 and, you know, whatever. But, yes, I can I can see the wry smile from Kyle as he finally shakes the ghost of Kirk Cousins. But I don't think it I don't think it's in their best interest to make it clear that they pushed it in any way because they're going to have another draft next year and another draft next year. I mean, not with any first rounders, but they're going to have more drafts and this stuff, you know, how you operate. Matters. I, I do think if they don't take him, it will be the lesson that whether the scouts ultimately knew or not, it's another year of this place being pretty leak proof. Yeah. So now the, to your original point, this is how teams operate. The question is also, and we who knows if we'll know this in the end. Um, the question is, who did other people like? Who did Kyle start liking? Did Kyle evolve over the course of January and February as he watched guys? Did he take the two cents of some of these other people? Did he really, truly consider uh, opinions that were not the same as his? And that's, you know, those are the questions ultimately we always have with the final decision maker. Well, if you're John Lynch and you and I'm Adam Peters and you go, I want you to put a final grade on the top on your top three quarterbacks of the Mac Jones, Justin Fields, we'll include Zach Wilson and Trey Lance. If I, I would not want to know, like, if I'm Adam Peters, your ranking, right? And if you're John Lynch and you're doing it, you don't want to know my ranking until we sit down, have the, the thing fully, you know, finished our evaluation and then talk it out. That's because if I work for you and th th that's the thing that's different, like in the thing the sad part about Twitter, you're trying to people that aren't like have no impact on your life. But in a real business situation like an NFL team, there is a hierarchy. There is a GM, then there are his assistants, there's a head coach, and there are his assistants. You want to do right by them, right? Unless you have, like maybe Mike McDaniels has such a longstanding relationship, he's okay going against the grain. But most guys aren't. Like they're just, they want to make the head coach, the boss happy. That, that is human nature. And you got to be very careful with that. Now I'd argue like, rich the quarterback coach who just came went to philly came back like i don't know if his opinion matters i, I mean I, and i'm not trying to diminish his role but like what other his like how is it going to have any impact on what they do unless he like has an inside to impact kyle's thinking but if he doesn't like 
and this gets to like a lot of scouting departments, like ultimately the assistant scouts and the West coast guy and the Southeast guy, like their opinions just don't matter if it doesn't jive with the boss's opinion. Cause that guy makes a decision. Yeah. You're just making suggestions. 